Hi everyone, Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and this is another video on improving your communication skills will be episode 67 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast. In a previous video I've talked about the importance of telling stories as a way of relating to other people on a deeper level than just um, telling conceptual opinions and staying on the limited level of where did you grow up, what did you do, what's your name, where are you from, all those obvious conversations, the importance of telling stories because that's how we relate to each other. And if we didn't get the impression that we were that interested in growing up for whatever reason, maybe people, adults around us were more interested in their own stuff than in what we have to say, we might have just got the impression that people aren't interested in our stories and then um, don't think to tell them. But if you can practice telling stories, then you, just little things that happen to your, your life, in your life day to day, then you'll notice that people start relating to you on a different level and find points in common with you. So as guard, guardrails, which some of you may feel you need, um, I want to talk to you about two structures that you will have had a lot of events or periods in your life fall into that are pretty useful for relating to other people. You can think of how many, how many events fall into these two structures and they'll give you the waypoints along the way when you try and tell the events of your life to fit them into. Um, we all have events and periods of our life that fit into these structures. They're universal to the human condition. So one is simply like, once I was like this and I didn't like it because these were the results. That's phase one. Then I learned this or I did this or I discovered this, phase two. And now I'm like this and I can do this. So now I'm much happier. And these are the results I get. So there's a very simple structure. I'm going to break it down a little bit further, but just to give you some examples. So I'm making these small talk videos. I could say, you know, I didn't used to be very good at small talk and I didn't like it because when I went into social situations, I knew I could talk about deep conceptual topics, philosophical topics, political discussions. I like to get in a rousing debate with my friends, but I didn't feel like it was easy for me to like just chill and have a normal conversation with regular people. So what were the results of that? Well, I might have avoided speaking to people that I didn't know, or I might have just left, fe uh, left situations feeling not as good as I wanted to. Um, then I, over the last couple of years, I've started to go out and speak to lots of strangers and learn lots of things about small talk. I even wrote a small ebook called How to Make Small Talk. Um, and now I'm much happier because I feel like so much more flexible in social situations. I can get along with people better. I've got the opportunity. I can relate on more levels. All of that good, deep, meaningful, philosophical discussions, I can still do all that. But I feel like I can relate to more people on more levels and relate to the kind of people that I didn't think I could relate to before. I could tell a specific story about an example of one person that I didn't think that I could relate to, but I ended up relating to. That would open up a conversation where I could tell that story. Um, for example. So that falls into that kind of structure. If you read my book, Procrastination and Annihilation, um, you might have noticed that the intro section does, uses a similar structure to this. Uh, and it's an old structure. Uh, it's nothing new. I guess it's noticed. It's no, it's not, uh, no one invented it. It's noticed. But it was applied to sales. So it's very simple, especially in the personal development industry or any industry where people are teaching things that they learned to say, I didn't know this or used to be good at this and I got these results and I didn't like them. So I explain in procrastination annihilation how being a procrastinator was ruinous for me, how, how I didn't like it. And then I tried a bunch of stuff that didn't work. Uh, I talk about why the other advice on procrastination that I've got that before was of some use but not that much use and I explain why. Um, then I learned this, and I talk about what I learned that changed my life. And now I can do this. I talked about the results that I got, which were different from before. Like I've been putting out these uh, podcasts and videos rather regularly. Um, I write every day, all sorts of things that I couldn't do when I was a chronic procrastinator. And so I say that that's made me happier. And these are the results I got of being less procrastinator in my life. Then 
then you know that's where you can end one of your stories but if you were to use this apply this to selling your product or service you say then I taught what I learned to other people and found out that they got the same results that I did and finally you're selling your book you say now I'm teaching it to you so that follows my journey you might have heard of the hero's journey Joseph Campbell um, as a recovered chronic procrastinator or recovering chronic procrastinator and what I have to offer to someone reading the book why they should read the book so that's um, you should th you could think of two to five stories from your life that you can that where you went through this transformation a similar transformation and you can have them in your back pocket practice telling each of them a few times to a few people and see what you get out of that uh, as you tell the same story several times you get more confident telling that story and that will give you more confidence to tell other stories and um, I know I could you know I spice up could talk about learning the guitar the first time, couple of times I tried to learn the guitar I didn't do too well but then when I left school I got in a band with a friend of mine and I started to play the guitar I was already a piano player just I thought well maybe if I just learn enough that I can get some ideas down and show them to someone else that's a much better guitar player than me they'll be able to develop my ideas but it got to the point where I liked playing my own songs and singing them on the guitar so I decided to keep going with that and now hey if I turn up an open mic night I can bash out a couple of tunes on the guitar so you must have uh, transformations positive transformations in your life that you've gone through that these story structures can help you with uh, you can start your story with a little hook to get you need to give people a reason to listen to what you're saying so you can just say oh I had a really interesting thing happen last night oh this is for the next story structure I apologize so it's not um, vastly different this is just a similar story structure going over a smaller space of time these are much better for anecdotes and you'll definitely want to think of a few that fall into this structure and the interesting thing is I run how to make small talk workshops once a week here in Glasgow and one of the exercises we sometimes do is I get people to up to tell an anecdote and it's very interesting how many people's stories naturally fall in to this structure anyway didn't ask them to use the structure but just the, the kind of things that my clients come up with when they're telling stories fit neatly into this structure so it's very simple five steps I went to this thing there was something unsatisfactory about it you know didn't think I was gonna like it it wasn't that great at first but then or so I did something else or that and then it went a different way step four this is what happened and then moral of the story conclusion this is what, what I learned however you want to conclude the story so one person came to the workshop and told a story about how he was um, on a skiing holiday but some of his friends didn't want to go out every day or something like that so he decided to go hitchhiking up to the mountain because the person who was driving wasn't coming out he didn't want to miss a day and how and the interesting people that he met that when he went when he hitchhiked and how diverse they were so there, there was there was a thing where um, there was something unsatisfactory obviously he protracted this story um, another person talked about a night out where they uh, could, didn't feel like they could they went to a meetup.com event and they didn't feel like they could relate to anyone at first but then they started talking to this crazy lesbian and what uh, her, she took him on a wild adventure and some friends to a gay bar which he'd never been to and shenanigans ensued uh, he ended up making up with this lesbian's friend and um, all sorts of things so he had a really funny time uh, so you can start something with you know I had a really interesting time last night or something really crazy happened Friday night or hey guess what there's a good way to start a story uh, or I have, to, I have to tell you something you know get make sure you hook people's attention before you start blabbing now remember you are you you might not have been told before uh, but if you watch my videos you might remember the earlier in the interaction you are with someone the shorter your short stories should be make sure that someone is invested before telling a big protracted epic saga so you have to calibrate you know I like to say when I'm say I'm, I'm talking to someone new in a bar in a club uh, I'll, I'll tend to remember something that's happened this week and it, over the last couple of months 
I've made the point, made a point, which you can do as well, of trying to remember the most interesting thing that happened in my week so that I'm ready to share it. And you can say, um, if you can pull it off, I'll tell you something that happened recently, and it is fucking crazy. That kind of thing, you will have to have the swagger to be able to pull off a story that meets the results. But the better and better, the more practice you get this, the more sure you will be that you will be able to improve at your storytelling, your anecdote telling. So the great thing about having one or two stories prepared is that you can actually take the time to get good at them, practice them to people you know first. You don't have to tell them you're practicing, or you can if you want. It's completely up to you. And then try telling them with people, new people, people that you've just met. So if you want more, you can find them all on YouTube. There's a how to make small talk playlist on my YouTube channel. I'm there under Anthony Samaroff. And also, of course, if you're listening to the Be Yourself and Love It podcast, you're probably subscribed on iTunes. Do me a little favor. Please leave a review on iTunes. I don't have that money, many, but I'm told that they make a big difference. Thanks very much. And until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.